These are the Kentucky Fried Movie DVD extras, <laughs> which, which makes us, are we extras? No, that's a good anyway. pun, though. Thank you. Extras. extras also means. <laughs> um, See, in the movie yeah, business. The movie okay, business. sorry. He's what we call them background, though. Background, that's right. They're yeah. called background, no, not background extras. Maltese. Extras background is a little real rude, isn't it? Yeah, extras? who is the guy, John? Who is my AD on all the naked? Kretschmer? Gun? Kretschmer always used to say background artist. He was like the background artist. <laughs> now he's the most that's polite like, and wonderful yeah. assistant director. Performance artist. Per yeah, well, that was a, yeah. It was 1971, and I was just out of college. Jerry was doing his practice teaching because he was an education major. And Jim Abrams, our friend, was a private investigator for a law firm in Milwaukee. And Jerry was in Madison at the, at the University of Wisconsin. So uh, I managed to get a hold of some videotape, which my dad borrowed from a friend of his. And uh, so we, we, we just thought we could make spoofs of TV commercials and maybe put them and combine them with a live show because Jerry also knew our friend Dick Chudnow, who was another, another TA at Madison, and they had a performance group which was uh, improvisations. And so we combined that with, the, with our TV commercials and we, we just made a stage show. I thought my razor was dull until I heard that last <laughs> answer. <laughs> Should we start over? Crouch over no, uh, no, no, no. Uh, uh. It's fine. Yes, that was excellent. You that would agree was, with that. I mean, that was, yeah. was all correct. Yeah. Everything in there was correct. Very monotone, but very, but just right I'll, on. I'll Perfect. try to vary yeah. the pitch yeah, exactly. a little bit. But I just. But he just, David. I should say. Wait a second. I should say, David just got off the plane. We're in London now, um, and David just got off the plane from America. So this and is not so my usual little, self. Yeah. His, his suitcase is actually just back there. <laughs> you can see it sight. in the back. Yeah, it's probably in the back of the yeah. shot anyway. So, okay, just to set the stage. Well, I, I think at some point we decided we didn't want to be a performing group, you know, and, and we had done some television, but it just didn't seem to be our thing either. So we thought, wait a minute, you know, maybe movies would be would be good and and uh, you know then Ken Shapiro had done uh, Groove Tube uh, the the film which was a bit film and I think there was uh, no I guess that was it there was just that one and we thought gee we have this whole show with all these different bits and you know it's be fun to write new stuff and 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 try to make a movie and maybe we could actually get that made because it, we could do it cheaper so I think that was kind of the genesis of it. And then we met John Landis, um, and because uh, we didn't know anything about David actually saw John Landis on The Tonight Show. And he was on The Tonight Show because he was a 21-year-old kid who had directed a, a movie, Called which Schlock. was Schlock. And, and so he was uh, on the show, and so David, uh, David got <laughs> the his number from the distributor of the movie and Levitt, called Levitt Pickman. Levitt Pickman and called John and what did John's reaction was how did how'd you get this number and I said well they gave it to me and he was like about to get on the phone to Levitt Pickman to <laughs> scream at them I said no no I don't want anything from you I just want to invite you to our show we have this Kentucky Fried Theater show uh, on Pico so come over and see it and he did and and then uh, and then we had uh, uh, took him out to lunch. The three of us, Jim and David and I, took him out to to uh, uh, lunch and and just asked him questions about how do you make a movie. And, and he said he said first you need a script. And we said we know that, but what was what does one look like? <laughs> and so <clears throat> he went out to his car and brought us back one of his scripts, which happened to be titled American Werewolf in London. And this was like years before he ever got that uh, on film. But we actually, we took that and we used that as kind of a template so we, you know, we knew how to do I mean, it. Not the structure no, of, not, the, yeah. of the movie, but just, but, the, but just the how the format. Because we didn't even know, you know, fade in, and, yeah. how dialogue was, I mean, we knew nothing. As a matter of fact, I think the reason David called him was because he thought, gee, the guy's 21. Maybe he'll talk to us because you know nobody else would. So, so, and he was right. And John was really nice, and he was just very happy to, you know, tell us what what he knew and uh, um, and kind of got us got us started.
I, I don't think so. I don't think that actually, in a way, it sort of made it, it seemed to make it easier because it was all, you know, most of it could be done on, on locations and, uh, uh, you know, could be done fairly simply and, uh, um, you know, it didn't really require, well, in those days, I guess they didn't have special effects, so forget no, that. No, special effects hadn't but been invented. Hadn't but, been invented yet, but, but we, we were, we knew they were coming, but anyway. We did the whole movie on, at really, uh, one big mansion on the grounds and in the mansion at, in Pasadena. And, uh, the do, what was the, it, the Dovidina? The Dovidina mansion, mansion, it was called, and some of the like sets that. were constructed outside, and we just, you know, that it wouldn't rain, and then, and they didn't have any uh, ceilings, so that the light we just used natural light, just like they used to do in the silent movies. Yeah, we also prayed that they'd be funny. Yeah. Well. Kentucky Fried Movie was just a really fun movie to shoot. I mean, every day there was something wild going on. Every day there was a great gag, or two, or three, or twelve. And I, I think probably, I don't know, if you want, if you're trying to. It's hard to say the most what the most fun one was. Uh, a fistful of yen was was I think really f fun to to shoot. But oh, you know what? I will tell you what I think the m most fun was was for, for my personal I think would be the um, uh, the zinc oxide, the oh, zinc yeah. oxide in you. That was great. That was really a treat to uh, to film. Yeah, it was great. Cleopatra Schwartz, of course, was. But then it doesn't make any sense if it's not an answer. So, okay, go ahead, you answer. <laughs> <laughs> what Sherry meant, uh, jet lag. What it's Sherry meant to lag. say was yes. that he enjoyed the Cleopatra Schwartz uh, commercial the most because it involved nudity. And yeah. in fact, those are the days that when Jerry actually showed up on the set. Yeah. I used to used to call in ahead of time and see yeah, if was, there was going to be any there, nudity. Yeah, were there going to be any breasts today? Yeah. Oh, yes. Sure, Jerry, come on in. Yeah. Sometimes we have to lie about it. Yeah. We actually thought it would be funny. I, I, I don't if, think we wrote any, I don't think we've ever written anything. Just to meet girls. <laughs> No, that would have probably would have been worthwhile, but just for for the box, you know, because we thought this is what's popular in the box office. Other than the fact that we knew we were we were uh, unbridled in terms of of just you know it's an, a hard hour. We were going to go for it. We were um, you know we didn't we didn't have to be restrained. Uh, so, but but other than that, we only write what we think is funny and. Unfortunately, we're all, we're all just really immature, so it, it tends to, you know, be that kind of humor. The spoof movie trailers that were in Kentucky Fried Movie, evidently we did invent that because yeah. we, we now now that we think of it, we, we can't think of anybody who did them before we did, so we, we may well have... Yeah, uh, I had no idea. We were not aware at the time that we were inventing anything, but... Or but sprocket holes. Yeah, or, yeah sprocket holes we yeah. invented. The, yeah. the movies, but prior to contemporary movie, there were no sprocket holes, yeah, and, and they, they would had, make it really difficult. They were done on a kind of film. these rubber rollers. Yeah. So who knew? And but, David and Jim and I uh, yeah. uh, invented that. But but uh, um, uh, I, th I think that I, I guess that this, uh, uh, someone had just mentioned to us that they thought um, it was the first uh, time there was a, that a. a a trailer had been spoofed, a preview of coming attractions had been spoofed. I, I actually wasn't aware of that, but if that's true, then, then we'll take credit for being and the first. And we never did it again after that. Yeah, that's true. There had been a lot of spoof commercials. I mean, we, I think the first one that we saw that was kind of delighted us was uh, Putney Swope. Uh, it had, had a, a, um, a spoof of a TV commercial. Uh, that was uh, that was really funny, but I'm sure. But look at television did spoofs of of TV commercials all the time. I mean, they you know the the I'm sure you know Milton Berle and oh, all they those probably did. That's shows. Right. Yeah, oh, they so all we can't did even that claim stuff. That then, yeah. yeah, well, that's but that's yeah. But, but in a film, in, in, but a movie, it wasn't yes. in a movie. I don't know. And you know, background. We also did a lot of background humor, and that I mean, I remember seeing uh, a movie called Harold and Maude. Which, which had some wonderfully uh, funny background gags. When he would, he would right. be uh, trying to commit suicide and 
burning himself in the background where, yeah. while oh, something right, else right, was right. going in the foreground. In the foreground. Yeah. I think that impressed us a lot. Yeah. He was a friend of John Landis. And Any, anybody who was famous was a friend of John Landis because <laughs> we didn't know anybody. Yeah. But yeah. Landis had worked on a bunch of movies prior to that and he got Bill Bixby in yeah. and uh, who's the guy that was on Laugh-In? Henry Gibson. Oh, Henry Gibson. Yeah, they were all friends of John's. Yeah. And uh, Goldie Hawn. I mean, there she was wasn't. a lot of all these. Oh, she, she wasn't, wasn't in it. Oh, she no, wasn't in no, it. No, no. Nobody knew her. Uh, you'd have to ask Donald. I think he... <laughs> I mean, I, don't, I, I still don't get that gag. Yeah. I mean, That's it was right. just as used to have Donald Sutherland in. But, you know, other yeah. than that, just to have him fall into a cake without any reason yeah. wasn't really that funny. But we were really impressed with ourselves that we, we had Donald Sutherland. We got Sutherland. to meet Donald we Sutherland. We got to meet Do Donald Sutherland, yeah. And then we resolved to, whenever we had a big celebrity cameo in the future, we were going to make it funny. <laughs> My favorite subsequent to that is uh, Ethel Merman in yeah. Airplane. That's my favorite cameo in any of yeah. our films. Was she, was, she, uh, was she game? She was to Ethel Merman was totally game, and, and she, she was wonderful. She's sweet, a really sweet, nice woman, and, and uh, I think her only stipulation was, because I don't think we paid her very much, but she wanted to bring her hair person. Uh, Which we agreed to had, pay for. Yeah, to, to fly her hair person out and, yeah. and to do her hair. And, and I mean, you can look at her hair on, in the movie. It's that, it's that famous kind of beehive or whatever that yeah. was, that hairdo. That, that she had, uh, but that was her and she loved it. But she was, she was great. Um, uh, Ethel Merman, was, it was just really a thrill to have her on the set. I mean, I think really, certainly up to that time, uh, I was, uh, meeting her was, was, uh, was one of the, you know, most, more exciting, um, things uh, in terms of, 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 you know, hanging with famous actors. Jerry had led an exceptionally dull life up yeah. to that point, so this was, this was Merman. a thrill. Ethel Merman. Not, not the emphasis well, from Catholic school girls in, in trouble, but Ethel Merman. Yeah, no, I'd take Ethel all over yeah. all of them. She was great. Well, a lot of it, I mean, we used to play football and baseball, and Jerry would be in watching, you know, those musicals. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know. It was kind of, yeah. Um, lived with mom for about Judy. The f your first 40 years of yeah, your life. Yeah, yeah. I lived with a lot of Judy yeah, Garland. Yeah, you know? well, yeah, yeah, yeah. We would always screen uh, films uh, in front of an audience. You, you can't put a, a comedy out, I don't think, without pre-screening and, and to see what works in a number of screenings. And we've done that with all our movies. Now, do you remember, I know we did a lot of editing on Kentucky Fried Movie. Do you remember what things particularly well, were? Well, I, I don't remember particular things, but I do remember <laughs> that the first screening of, of Kentucky Fried Movie, like every comedy we've ever done, had been, it was a disaster the first time we, uh. we played it. Not, not quite the disaster that Airplane was when uh, that first screening, but you know, I remember I invited friends. We screened it up in, uh, we Francisco, tested it in San Francisco. Right? Yeah. And I invited, at that time, I had friends, you know, and, and th some of I them I remember those San, days. Yeah, yeah, San Francisco. And, you know, I don't know, like five or six friends, and I invited them. To, I would never do that today. Of course, today I'm not doing movies <laughs> either, but... But it's it, a day. Yeah. The first screening yeah, is always dangerous. We just yeah. pray because there's 20 minutes in there that's not going to be funny. So and and comedy really you know survives on on that pace. Like everything's going to be funny, and so every movie at least 20 minutes is going to be cut out. So if you if you if you can imagine just sitting there for 20 minutes and nothing's funny, it's it's pretty deadly. But and it's spaced throughout the movie. No, there were some things that came out completely, but I just don't remember. I don't remember. think in those, we needed so much, we needed everything, so we kept everything in. You don't think there was not one thing that we filmed? Not that one thing that really? came out. Maybe the, huh. there was a, 
There was a, a, a fixative where the where the, oh, right, where the right, thing yeah. caught fire. Yeah, that well, came I don't know out. why that wasn't funny though. The fixative sketch was a was a mock on this uh, on an ad that was playing a lot for one of these, uh, you know, uh, uh, call in products uh, that 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 you'd order, not yeah, something order, order by phone things, and 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 it was just this, uh, I don't know. It was Paste a coat. or powder no, no, or something. Yeah, but well, no, the, a, the, the product yeah, was a right. powder oh, that you yes. put on. Yeah. It, when there was, if there was a hole in fabric, you'd put this on, and somehow it would patch it. I, I don't even remember yeah. what it was right. actually supposed to do, but it, it showed this, this coat, and and and. Uh, and so in the real ad, and they'd put the thing on, and the guy said, "Fix it, or, or you know, fixes anything, and instantly, and it was droning on." And what what was we no, did? It was I remember what, the ad yeah. said, "We're burning a hole in this coat to oh, that's show you." Right. And so they had a cigarette, and they would burn a hole in a coat on the camera, and then they would show you know it burned a hole in it, and then uh, they they put the fixative fabric ah. adhesive, and they they showed it just knit together and sewn up, and you couldn't even see what we did was we kept that announcer going and we burned the hole in the coat and then it burst into flames, it kept burning. And I think- And then the what, whole coat in there yeah, throwing the on coat, fixative throwing and more fixative. water and all it that kind funny. of stuff. Yeah, it was funny, I don't yeah. know what- uh, Yeah. That's a, that was one of those rare cases where we were right and, and, the, and the audience was wrong. But, you know, it could have been- Hundreds maybe, of people were just wrong. Oh, yeah. And we would- It we, happens. Yeah, we wanted to release the movie and then with an explanation of why you know, they, Why it's some funny. of these bits were funny. And uh, maybe it burst into flames too fast. It was probably the special oh. and it just And we couldn't afford to do take two. Yeah. Maybe we did, but each time I think the coat burned and the burst into flames. Anyway. Yeah. In general, we, we like to spoof anything that took itself seriously. Uh, I mean, though that would that would certainly be the, the, the best, uh, those would be the best vehicles for us. Um, and, and disaster movies uh, at that time were very in, in vogue, the Towering Inferno. And, and, we, and the, invariably they yeah. turned out to be B movies. Yeah. You know, even today, I just saw, I just saw about a half hour of 2012. Have you ever seen that? No. It's, it's exactly, you know, the, that kind of stuff that we would spoof. Oh, 2012, yes, yeah, right, 2012, right, 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 right. Independence right. Day, and those right, kind of right, right, yeah. Invariably, there's something about these disaster movies where they have, you know, a big cast, and you get, you have to get into everybody's personal life, and the stuff is just, the dialogue is, yeah. is unintentionally funny. Well, it was actually we wrote Airplane before we wrote Kentucky Fried Movie, and we couldn't get it, uh, we couldn't get backing to do Airplane, so. When Landis came to see our show and suggested, "Why don't you guys do a, a movie of your show?" Then we did that because, you know, we were trying to get into the movie business. When our movies were hits, you know, I have to say, I mean, nothing surprised us until Top Secret, <laughs> and I mean, and the reason, you know, we were we were really, uh, you know, we spent months and months and years trying to convince people to uh, finance these movies, whether it was Kentucky Fried Movie or Airplane or, or, or Topsy or wherever it was. But, uh, and because and, and we, we kept saying, this is gonna be a big hit. This is, this is you know, comedy gold or whatever we were saying. We, but we really did believe it. We thought the movies were funny and, and, and they would be a big hit. Well, very difficult because it, see, it, it is kind of an axiom in Hollywood that you can only, you only do, they'll only let you do what you've already proven that you can do. So, um, you know, at the time we did uh, Kentucky Fried Movie, we had proven that we could run a very successful small theater in you know, a live show in LA. So we wanted to take the next step. We wanted to write and produce a, a, a feature film. So when we did that, then with Airplane, we were insisting on directing it and not only being first time directors, but we were insisting that all three of us direct at the same time. So, you know, we hadn't even gone near proving we could do that. I think the biggest, I think the biggest question really was, I mean, there was, there were a hundred, you know, questions that people had about, uh, about an airplane, but I think that uh, 
one of the biggest was would satire, does satire work on film? Because there had been evidence to make people think that it didn't. There was a movie called The Big Bus, which was supposed to be, you know, which was satire, but it just wasn't, you know, we were doing a completely different kind of, of satire than that and to convince people that this was different and nobody really understood the, the, the way we wanted to cast it. I mean, we would explain it, but it is really, it's an easy thing to realize when, you've, when you see it, but to explain it to someone beforehand is actually turned out to be pretty difficult and, and actually even at Paramount who finally was, you know, every, everybody, every studio in Hollywood turned it down and, and finally Paramount said, okay, we'll make this and the first day of dailies when, and, uh, le when Leslie Nielsen says, uh, uh, I am serious and don't call me Shirley, that was in the, f in the first day's rushes, the, we got a call from the studio, you know, saying, okay, now we get it. <laughs> Uh, so, so uh, well, we got I, a lot of blank looks before that when we were as we cast one by one uh, actors like Robert Stack, <coughs> Peter Graves, uh, uh, Lloyd Bridges, and, and, Lloyd and Bridges, Leslie Nielsen. Yeah. And I remember the the Leslie Nielsen was the last straw for our casting director. He said, "Leslie Nielsen, Leslie Nielsen is the guy you cast the night before," and we were just so thrilled to have. Leslie, and it was like a month before. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, so uh, but but this this had never been done before. But as Jerry said, the first day of dailies, they got it. You know, when we cast Leslie Nielsen, nobody nobody got it. What Leslie Nielsen in a comedy, and and we actually, you know, when we talked with Leslie when we first met him, we said we just want you to play it straight like like you do all the other roles you 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 played and it's going to work great what we didn't realize was that Leslie was a closet comedian and but which anybody who knew him knew because he was a prankster and he was always making jokes and he I think Leslie kind of shared our sense of anarchy of 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 wanting to uh, 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 you know, pull the clothes off the, uh, the you emperor. know, the emperor or whatever, or, or, or announce that the emperor didn't have clothes. That's right, or, yeah, uh, so you kind of, or, um, yeah. or shop at the emporium or something. Anyway, <laughs> so the, the, the uh, uh, and so Leslie was really, more than anyone else, I think, was kind of one of us. And, and that was, uh, uh, that was a surprise. It's great to write for someone because it, so we knew we could just imagine Leslie doing it and and we knew certain things that he was great at and uh, and certain things uh, we knew that wouldn't be funny with any other actor but Leslie Nielsen doing it then this would be funny Leslie could get away with things that that very few actors could get away with Leslie was never trying to be funny he was always so you never, it, it, you never really expect it. So, it, it, because his job isn't, you know, quote comedian unquote, um, it's always, it always has that uh, aura of uh, the unexpected when something, when Leslie does something. So he can get away with lines like "nice beaver" that, with a, for a comedian, it would be a smart aleck remark. Uh, but for Leslie, it just played right in with that. It, we're not trying to be funny. We would frequently go into a screening with a two-hour movie, into a first preview, a two-hour movie, and we would think it all would be funny, but we knew that we'd be lucky if 90 minutes of it was, was, was funny because that's just always what what happens i think it is pretty i don't i mean look at movies have done it uh there have been two hour comedies um i think for our kind of c comedies those satires uh it, it where where you really um uh you know it's really not about the plot uh that that and it's more of a joke book that it's hard uh to to keep people laughing for more than uh, for more than a, an hour and a half, and, and with this kind of comedy, it's really it's hard to 
take a plot too seriously, but if you don't if you don't get the plot up to at least a you know modicum of respect, then you don't have a movie. So it, it they always seem to uh, work out to 85 minutes or you know 83 minutes, and we you know we but but in the some of the well I'm including credits. We we do yeah. everything we can. Yeah, you do. You <laughs> it's they, like six don't minutes they stretch of credits. to ninety stretch. with credits? No, really? No, not you. Just it just you, you eke out eighty, eighty five, eighty six minutes, or, or e even eighty two minutes with the credits because it's just you. You know the comedies depend on the pace. Our comedy influences surprisingly weren't really other comedies, but. It was, uh, I, I would say, first off, I mean, we, we were so affected by serious movies. And so we would, we would watch a lot of serious B movies and think that those were somehow funnier than the, the comedies of the day. But in the 1960s and 70s, I think we were all fans of Woody Allen and Mel Brooks. Uh, also Mad in college, the Marx Brothers. The Marx Brothers. Mad Magazine, Mad Magazine. I would say, was a huge in influence yeah. when we were kids. That was probably yeah. the first comedy influence because that was a satire magazine. And, you know, they did scenes we'd like to see. It was a textbook of satire. Yeah. And they had little things in the in the margins, you know. They yeah. would they would background uh, and stuff. and yeah and, and and so that was and we loved that. We loved Mad Magazine, and I think that was probably our first in, you know, uh, real real influence. And uh, and we loved the the Marx Brothers as, but that was a little bit later. That was when we were in college. When we first. Um, uh, ran our show in Madison, Wisconsin, Kentucky Fried Theater. Uh, we we uh, 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 got a notice from the phone company that Kentucky Fried Chicken had said had had written them and said they're sorry they cannot allow this uh, comedy group, Kentucky Fried theater to be using their name and you know they wanted them to discontinue the phone line and the phone company sent back a notice to both uh, the Kentucky Fried Chicken and us saying until there was some sort of legal direction they would continue to list both of us and that was the last I think we ever heard of Kentucky, I think once Kentucky they Fried were, Chicken. Yeah once they were comfortable with the fact that we weren't selling chicken yeah, right. It was okay. Right. But, yeah. But when then in our live theater in, on Pico Boulevard in L.A., uh, we were o only a block west of us was a an actual Kentucky Fried Chicken restaurant, <laughs> and so I think somebody who worked there uh, once told us that they they had a actually some people would call and it would be confusing because our the name of our show at our Kentucky Fried Theater was Vegetables, and so somebody called the Kentucky Fried Chicken restaurant saying. Do you have vegetables? And so the, whoever the clerk was that answered the phone said, "No, but we have coleslaw." <laughs> so it was like it was a comedy of errors. He, he, it's like life imitating art a little bit. We've talked from time to time about doing a sequel to Kentucky Fried uh, Movie, and actually we we own the rights to it now because they've they've gone back to us. Uh, but but um, we're waiting uh, to be contacted by investors. Yeah, <laughs> so that's right. So if anybody out, sees right. this, yes. no, yeah. we've 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 talked about it. It's just a matter of you know because we're all doing different stuff and busy. Whether we want to really take the time and do it, maybe we will. I don't know. We we were uh, when we wrote the script, we'd all meet at 9 a.m. At that time it was above our theater. We had, we had living spaces and, and our office essentially was there and so you know we, we would write the script from, you know just from we 9 just, to 5. Yeah we really had a ritual. We'd get yeah. up in the morning, we'd drink coffee and talk about politics for an talk hour. about yeah talk about politics until the coffee <laughs> until we were all like uh, it, uh, uh, until our motors were running and and then we'd start you know wherever we happened to be whether we were in the middle of some scene and okay how are we going to do this or whether we were just you know we'd always start just throwing jokes up 
And sometimes we'd look at old movies or TV commercials or, you know, to, to, to get ideas for, for spoof. Uh, but, but uh, you know, we'd really write a, a sort of a pretty normal working uh, day. And then at the end of the day, we'd kind of say, all right, we're all out of gas and see you tomorrow. But it was helpful to be in a group because you could always tell, I mean, if somebody thought of an idea, you would get an instant reaction. You, you, either it was funny or it wasn't. And if the initial idea wasn't that funny, somebody else would add it and, you know, well, a, change it. A, a lot of it, a lot of the, um, the, the bits were, were, in all our movies, were, were built as opposed to one person saying, wait a minute, I got an idea. You know, this is how we should do it. One person would say, wait a minute, maybe, Maybe we should do something about this, and then somebody, how about this? And so no, 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 but this, you know, and we, and then add something to it, and and uh, and then you know that's so it was a real collaborative effort. But I think at you know after a while, or really pretty close from the beginning, we had um, the kind of respect for each other that if if one of us. Uh, uh, proposed a, a joke and the other two didn't laugh, we'd just go on, you know, they would just, we, we'd say, oh, I guess it's not funny, <laughs> you know, because we, we had that kind, unless, unless there was something that you, you would, you'd think maybe the other two didn't understand what you were talking about <laughs> or something, but if they got what you meant and they didn't laugh, then that was, uh, um, you know, you just accepted that as, as, as the final arbiter of, 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 of whether it was any good. And also we, we attached very little value t or no value to whoever thought up what joke and so, and what would happen because we, we just ha didn't have any individual pride of authorship so that we never told there was no any, ego we, about we, it. We, we, yeah. we had a, really we had an understanding which kind of evolved naturally that we just didn't talk about who's, who wrote what jokes. And it, it served us well, and a lot of times they were just kind of almost forgotten. And we but really have, we, we yeah. just can't, I mean, there's all these, the classic lines from Airplane or The Naked Guns, I don't, I don't think we remember who thought of what. Yeah. And, 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 and as a result, it was all about, uh, you know, the, the final product and what was funny and not about how many jokes I have in, or David or Jim's, and 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 by the way, I should say that the other side of the thing of of proposing a joke and not getting a laugh was if you say something and the other two laugh, that's great. You know, it's it 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 is uh, funny. So it was it was a great. It was really a a fantastic collaboration. I mean, not that we didn't have our our disagreements and and our battles, but but it was um, we we underneath it all was a real love and trust, and and you know it was we and we never went against the family. I thought that. I up. thought that. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> um, Fistful of yet we. I actually, I never forget. Uh, uh, David, Jim, and I—we all went to see, maybe even with Bob Weiss. I can't remember. Enter the Dragon. Enter. We saw the the Bruce Lee film, Enter the Dragon, and we loved it. And we came out just, hi, hi, you know, karate chopping everything in sight. Yeah. Pretty clumsily, of course, but but uh, we we just we thought it was great. And and which actually is is it's probably worth mentioning that to do the kind of spoofs that we do, the kind of satire. It, we really need to have some, a little bit of affection for what we're satirizing. I mean, if it's in a whole, you know, movie like Airplane or or uh, a a, uh, a a twenty minute segment like or half an hour like like uh, Fistful of Yen. But we you really know, like you, those airplane you, you, we could, movies, yeah. Airport seventy five and we, Airport. We love those, but we we also saw the silly. You know, we could also make fun of them. So that was perfect. If we found something really hateful, I don't think we would have. We couldn't do it. Couldn't yeah. do a. a, a, a uh, wouldn't have had an and interest we, in. And doing we like we loved the Dirty Harry movies. We yeah. just we, they, we thought they were good movies. Yet yeah. there was so much to make fun of. Also. Yeah. So so. so um, you know, I don't know, I don't remember the moment where someone said, hey, let's do, you know, Enter the Dragon, uh, let's do a spoof of that, well, of that, that film. <laughs> but, but we, we uh, um, 
you know, that just seemed like how much, like tremendous fun and plenty of meat there. And, you know, so I think we just, we dove in and never looked back. I would say that was a high point. It was, we, we I love the idea that, that David put that into Naked uh, Gun 2, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, I, and, I was, I remember I saw a ghost and, you know, aside from the fact that I, I loved it, uh, I, you know, and tears coming, I mean, everybody <laughs> cries at the end of that thing. And then so, but I, but I called up Jerry, I was just so excited. And I don't know if you thought I was excited about the movie. I said, that pottery scene, we can spoof this. <laughs> exactly. I did, yeah. I, That's I David's, called, yeah. yeah. It's I like, was, hey, that was, more I was material. About, yeah, yeah, the movie was good, yeah, yeah. But we can spoof this, this great pottery scene. But also the tagline was wonderful. And if you look at, the, at that, the, you know, it was, a, it was a trailer, actually, it, it was, it was teaser. a teaser trailer yeah. first, and then put into the movie, right? Yeah, or? yeah the teaser trailer. We did, we did a couple of teaser trailers for the Naked Guns, and the greatest thing is being in the theater when these trailers played. And so you you hear the uh, you know Unchained melody by the Righteous Brothers and the tight shot of the of the hands on the pottery wheel, and you can, I would watch as every guy in the audience is going. <laughs> All right, it's another chick movie or something. <laughs> and then it, it, the shot widens out and it's Leslie and Priscilla. And then yeah. everybody is just, everybody's just laughing. But, but, but also I love the, the tagline was, from the brother of, of the, the director, director of Ghost. Of Ghost. <laughs> that was, that's right. <laughs> so it's like, how often do you get a chance to do something like that? You know, it's like that was that was that that might be in the high point of our of both our careers. It went down from yeah. shortly after yeah. that. <laughs> I did have that uh, worry that that perhaps um, just anything I did would just end up being people would laugh at, <laughs> even if I was intending it seriously. Uh, so I and in fact, the <laughs> the first screening, which actually went really well, but but there's that scene where where. Uh, uh, Patrick go, goes into Whoopi's body, you know, and that's, and so before, uh, uh, and so he's so he's now as Whoopi, and and you see, um, but 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 it's still the two women sitting together, and the hand comes over, and you're you're it, 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 you're not sure whether this is now going to be two women, <laughs> to, you know, together, uh, and and. The there was the audience was tittering. It's a and little uncomfortable. Yeah, it's first, uncomfortable. Yeah. It's, it's the audience was tittering, and I was like, oh, you know, oh no, it's the it's the my yeah. worst nightmare has come <laughs> true. I've done this heavily dramatic scene, and people are, uh, you know, with this music, you know, the Unchained Melody playing in the and background. And that's also and, where Jerry and, chose to put his directing credit yeah, right, right there. Exactly. The and yeah. people are laughing, you know, they're t or they're it, not exactly howling but <laughs> tittering, you know, and I, I ah. and I, it really almost like ruined the rest of the experience and basically the <laughs> you know the scores were high in the movie was people were you know like the movie and stuff but but uh, um, I, in the end I think I just said okay if it's a the movie is a roller coaster there's comedy and action and thrill whatever to, you know it, it, in it and and so I'm just gonna go I, I, I I'll just consider this you know, making the audience uncomfortable part of that ride. And in fact, I took out every ambient noise. I mean, you, I even took out, you know, like air conditioning hum and traffic outside and, and anything. So it's totally silent to make it more uncomfortable um, just because I just thought, well, Go great, that's a go for it. That's another emotion in a, in a sort of in a way. And, and, uh, and then I just, you know, so I, I just, I, I relaxed with it a little bit. A stage musical, yes. In, it opens in London. Uh, previews open end of March in, in London. And Bruce Joel Rubin, who wrote the screenplay, uh, wrote the, uh, a musical. Not the music. The music is uh, Dave Stewart and Glenn Ballard. Uh, uh, wrote the music and and uh, I think it's going to be from what I've seen and heard I think it's going to be fantastic. 
It is a lot different, but I mean, and I think there are jokes to be had, but not, not to fill up an entire movie. I mean, we just, our feeling is that, you know, we didn't really even have enough jokes to fill up, you know, the first airplane movie. And, and then we didn't, and Paramount wanted us to do Airplane 2, and we, we just, you know, declined to do that. And <laughs> so, but I think there, there are some, some great airplane jokes. It's just not enough to, to do an entire movie. There could yeah. be a 10-minute airplane sketch within a, a new yeah. Kentucky Fried movie. I mean, Kentucky Fried movie, you can go anywhere and yeah. do anything. It's just wide open. It's, yeah. uh, you can satirize anything you want. With an airplane movie, you're, you're stuck on an airplane ag ag again in a control tower and whatever. And I, I just, uh, um, I don't think either of us felt like we wanted to either then or, or now. Uh, and it came up again, someone at Paramount had suggested um, that that uh, you know maybe this would be a good time to to uh, to do another one and I, I, I don't think uh, none of us had any real interest in that our experience has kind of shown that I mean there's limited amount of genres that can really be sent up in a in a movie spoof I mean so far I mean we did okay with the airplane, the airport, uh, you know, disaster movie genre, and then the the cop genre, you know, the satire of Dirty Harry was very good, and then the Wayans when they did the scary, the first scary movie, showed that I mean, there's a huge, you know, well of material to be mined from uh, horror movies. But, but then those that, last two, oh my God. Oh, wait a minute, sorry. but I did those, Jerry. Oh, I forgot, sorry. Yeah, yeah those they, were great, the last they, two scary they movies. They still hold Loved the box them. office records. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So if there's yeah. any uh, uh, investors out there who'd like to <laughs> That's find right. more movies that we yeah, can do. Yeah, exactly. Um, but please but send, there's, but, but there's, if but, everybody who watches <clears throat> this would send yeah. a dollar. Well, then we could finance another and movie. Then, but, okay, sorry. But, you know, the, I mean, the Wayans, uh, you know, also try, they did a movie called Dance Flick, which, which was a satire of, you know, dance movies. And I don't think people want to see that genre. I did a movie called uh, High School High, and it's the, the, the dedicated teacher genre. And I don't, I, just those genres aren't as good, although my filmmaking was, was excellent. I mean, <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. yeah. But what it's a lost gem. Yeah, it's a lost gem. You can still uh, yeah. get that on DVD. No, they removed it. Oh, <laughs> it's just completely it's gone. It's just yet. gone, yeah. But, you know, there's, there, there are, yeah, I, don't know, I think there just, there aren't a bunch of genres that you can't really send up anything. I think it usually has to have a bad guy or a, or a big disaster in it. This has to be something that people are, yeah. you know, familiar with and. Yeah. And lend itself and, to and that just spoof. kind of be fun, you know. I yeah, mean, fun genre. F you know, the like the Chop Saki movies are just fun to watch. Yeah. So they're so they're great to satirize, and so are the disaster movies. Even when they're bad, they're sort of fun to watch. Yeah. No, ever since I really just was internationally recognized as a much superior director to yeah. David, I don't think we've really, you know, that just kind of. Yeah, and I just went on to do, you know, just huge box office hits. And it was, I mean, they were there, but, but they didn't have the art to them that Ghost had. <laughs> but I just, you know, um, I just went on to have a hugely successful career. And so, so there wasn't any competition. Yeah. yeah. Oh. No, we, we uh, were, um, we always talk and help each other with our, you know, talk to each other about what we're doing and we're, um, we, we, we're very good at, at pretending that we're really happy with the other's success. Yeah, so think, that's you know, kind of makes like it go. Like when Jim did the Hot Shots movie, yeah. we, we, when we ever we talked to him, we were really pretending that we, we were yeah, proud Yeah, pretending of him. that we were proud yeah, of him, oh, yeah. yeah. And not jealous, yeah. And he never found out. Yeah. Uh, he we never found out that we were, was, yeah, that we were he like. Made, he showed that he could be a success without us. That it was, well, I wanted to, one day I wanted to tell him that it was so good that I actually threw up and yeah. tried to kill myself. But <laughs> I, I don't know, I just thought maybe I better not yeah, I just, go there. And I had convinced myself that he could never do anything without us. And then he went to do hot shots, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, Hot, no, he was, he Hot was, shots uh, were great. No, we no, were. Was, yeah, we sorry, were, kidding, uh, kidding. Okay. We just, yeah. 
<laughs> you better be sure to include this in it. The hot, yeah, the hot <coughs> shots were hilarious. great. Were great movies, and and uh, <coughs> and a um, great idea for a spoof too. Uh, I mean. Yes, there's another example yeah. of a really you you just it was you want to <coughs> be there. It was just fun to, you know, be on that on the battleship and in the planes and all that yeah. stuff. It was just you know be out. Above, above and beyond the 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 Top Gun satire. and stuff that sticks with you because like, you know, he had one character in it called Dead Meat and you just you knew that guy was gonna die and so every time I see a movie where you know a certain character is gonna die and I just think of that character Dead in, Meat. in yeah in Hot Shots Dead Meat yeah. yeah. Dave and I were pretty close growing up but you know we played I mean we were we have an older sister. And so we were the two younger boys, and we would always be inventing games all the time and pulling pranks and all that. And we fought, you know, too and stuff, and argued all the time. But but we were kind of, you know, we, we were kind of tied together. We 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 you know did a lot of stuff together, except when David went off to college and I was still in high school, and he got bell-bottom pants. And I was like, I think I disowned him. Yeah, he was shocked. Yeah, I was that. shocked. Yeah. I was shocked. I was. It was nineteen sixty seven, and uh, sixty six or something like that. And I was a junior in high school, and he was a freshman in college. And uh, I just my thought, grades weren't that great, but I did make quite a fashion statement. Yeah, bell bottoms. In those days, yeah. And then, then we made we made uh, films. We made comedy oh, movies right. in, when we were in college, and that's kind of what started our our real professional collaboration. One was about Jerry taking uh, LSD and uh, then peeing all over the campus <laughs> in, in Madison. <laughs> sort of. Yeah, but th those that's were the a, uh, those were rough the, that was the yeah. And we did a satire on Midnight Cowboy. And yeah. later we both we both got to work with. Uh, Dustin Hoffman and uh, and John Voight. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was called. There was a, a one of the class times was twelve oh five. That was I don't you know just the way they scheduled it. There were um, you know uh, every class at that time was twelve oh five or you know one twenty and whatever as it went. Along. On and and uh, so the title was 1205 Cowboy, and and it was uh, uh, just some guy who started on the dish crew because we worked on the dish crew at a dormitory in Madison, you know, to, uh, and and uh, um, you know it was sort of followed, sort of vaguely the, the the you know the the story. It was it was not not a great not a great work of art, but yeah. it was but the people on campus liked it. I think people were definitely ready for a Kentucky Fried movie. I think every, in a, in a sense, everything paves the way from for what comes afterwards. Uh, you know, certainly, um, it became uh, acceptable to have that kind of language and nudity in the theater. Now, in, interestingly enough, it, it would be tougher in, now to do Kentucky Fried movie because. It's that's all allowed on cable television. You know, you can do, you can do anything and and uh, say anything, on uh, in a lot of uh, you know, on, and on the internet. And so, uh, it's it's, uh, um, and it, but at the time, uh, part of the appeal of that movie was you know naughty stuff that you couldn't see on 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 television. Uh, but I think that's what. You still have to do in movies. I mean, we're in the in the business in the movie business of getting people to leave their homes for something. Yeah. So, if you can if you can do funny and make people laugh out loud, and you always have to be kind of shocking, and you have to do something new that people haven't seen before. But there always is material like that. So, yeah. I think the cinema going experience has has remained relatively unchanged. I mean the big difference is now there's so much competition because you can you can see it at at, at ho there's so much content available at home. It used to be three networks, you know, and 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 now there's uh, hundreds of cable channels and and the internet. Uh, but but when you walk into a theater 
and you sit in a seat and you see images projected on the screen, it's really basically the same experience. I mean, what's on the screen has changed a lot in terms of, of what you can do and, and, and the, uh, you know, with, with special effects, CGI. And 3D. 3D and 3D, 3D, 3D and, and everything. a big thing to add to the theater experience. But, but, but I think basically it's, it's, uh, it's still that thing of, of a group of people sitting together to, uh, to watch a story. And especially in comedy. It's so important to have that that theater experience where you have people, uh, you know, a shared experience, and you hear the laughs. I mean, um, Jim's kids, who are now in their you know mid twenties, saw Airplane for the first time. I don't know, three or four years ago, at a you know one of these uh, anniversary screenings of Airplane, and they were just blown away by it. They had never seen it in front of an audience. And to see the and to to sit in, in the audience and they're all laughing and it's it's a completely different experience than they had watching it on yeah. video at home. Yeah. There is no right number. When we screen a movie, we like to have at least three hundred people yeah. uh, because uh, I mean, when we're in the editing process, because that's kind of what we need to. Get a sense of what's working and 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 what's and what's not, but in terms of just enjoying uh, a, a movie, I mean, if you have 20 people there who are who are good laughers and really enjoying it, you can it's it 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 becomes a much better experience. But there's nothing like like a big auditorium with hundreds of people. Uh, there's a lot of Kentucky Fried movie that doesn't really hold up, I think. Yeah. Uh, but but there's a lot of it that does, you know. And so I'm kind of like a, take the optimistic point of view that that gee, it's great that that so much of it does hold up. Um, uh, but but uh, and there's a run in Fistful of Yen, yeah, where he says uh, he's getting a tour through the prison, and he's and uh, Evan asks who are these, and he says. Just lost drunken men who uh, don't know where they are and no longer care. And who are these? And then he says, well, these are lost drunken men who know where they are and care but don't drink. And, so, you know, it's like, like, and yeah. we did, we played with that thing and we kept playing. And it was every time it, it's a laugh and it's still funny today. And I'm, yeah. you know, I think we're really proud of stuff like that that, yeah. that has lasted all these years. Some of the more topical stuff that uh, d d something that, that, that includes specific references to specific commercials maybe are, you know, can't be as effective to Right, me. right. But uh, most, of it, most of it really holds up. And of course, you know, naked breasts always hold up. Always hold up. <laughs> so to speak. In film. Yes, right, in film. Yes, in right. film, they always do. They're just <laughs> yes. preserved yes. forever, yes. yeah. It was uh, $700,000. For, it was the budget of Kentucky Fried Movie, and and that was you know in 1977. So wait a sec, 76, 77, 76. It was out. In came seven. out in 77 or 77. So oh oh. So we shot it in yeah. It came out August in 77. Anyway. So. Okay. So anyway, but so the the uh, uh, well you know, yeah. uh, but but uh, um, the budget was was seven hundred thousand dollars in 1976 or seven and, uh, and, and which was low even then and, but I, I think we got a lot out of it because there were no big highly paid actors and uh, we really put every dollar on, on on screen obviously we weren't paid very much so it's a long story about the, how we got the financing, but the, the, essentially uh, we made, uh, David and Jim and I uh, um, decided to invest uh, $30,000, uh, which is about all we you know, had, and, and made 10 minutes of the movie that John directed. And uh, we, we, there were four bits. And we showed those to everybody, and because nobody would just finance it just on the script, and uh, 
the studios all turned it down, but uh, a friend of ours, Kim Jorgensen, who is the executive producer of Kentucky Fried m Movie, uh, uh, loved it and took it to uh, f of, f of friends of his that ran United Artists Theater Circuit. So that's the people that own the theaters, not the, not the movie company. And they uh, played it in one of their theaters and people laughed and and uh, they said they figured I think that that worst came to worst they could make money back by playing it in their own theaters, and uh, and so they financed it. That was the hardest movie to make a poster yeah. out of. I mean, there were so many different. But I think both of them were designs, pretty good. But they weren't yeah. bad. Yeah. In the end, we we it took a, a while getting there. Yeah. But there were so many bad ones on the way. Yeah. United Artists Theater Circuit marketing department, or if they had yeah. a marketing department, or no, they, they went to out, they it? farmed it out. No, they didn't have any kind of because they yeah. didn't make movies yeah. really. This was one of a handful yeah. that they made uh, during that time, and and uh, they just they went to uh, uh, an ad company and uh, to design a a, a one sheet and. Uh, this is what they came up with. But I mean, there was, I think they probably went to a, a, a number of different companies. And I just, I just remember there were a lot of, uh, you know, bad ones that, uh, at the beginning. And then they came up with these, which, which everybody said, hey, wait a minute, this is, this is pretty fun. Was the title the first one to have movie in the, at the end of the title? I don't know. That could we could have maybe first. have another. First. No, no, no. Um, uh, Dennis Hopper made the last movie. Oh. Okay, the last movie. Okay. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I actually wasn't really aware that that um, Kentucky Fried Movie <laughs> had that long second life. <laughs> had, had a second life or, or that great they were longevity. DVDs. Yeah. yeah, I don't. Uh, um, yeah, they never sent us one. Yeah, no, right. um, I. I um, um, you know, it's it's different with with. Airplane really has, I think, held up, and that was, I, I don't think we would have ever expected that, you know, 30 years from now, it, it, it would still be so popular. Um, you know, Kentucky Fried Movie is still a cult movie, and, and I, it's hard, it's impossible to judge, I, I think for, for us to, to judge to what extent or how popular, because, I do hear people talk about it, but I just there's no there's no measure for for me. I have no idea what the what the DVD sales are and and uh, um, or 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 you know how how people are responding to it, uh, other than anecdotally. You know. We were thrilled to have a the movie you know, not only make its money back, but, you know, make such a big profit because we, that means that we didn't have to go back to the theater. We didn't have to, you know, be on stage anymore. And so we were definitely thought that now we could be in the movie business. And That's why the, the, the money that we made from Kentucky Fried Movie, our profit participation, which was not enormous, but it was enough that we could write airplane and yeah. and uh, for a, a, you know take a year or more really to to work on writing it and getting it made without having to uh, f you know find other work. There is no Samuel L. Bronkowitz, of course, um, and sure. and uh, maybe not of course. I don't think people know. <laughs> oh yeah, well. It was a made-up name. It's a, Samuel Broncos was a made-up name, and we did it because you know nobody knew. We were all young kids, and and uh, uh, you know we weren't. We had to form our own company because United Artists Theater Circuit wasn't writing the checks directly for for services and and. Uh, equipment, etc. So we thought that Samuel Bronkwood sounded like a legitimate name and so people would do business with us. And, and in fact, um, 
a few t more than a few times, <laughs> we would call someone and say, uh, "This is." Well, they'd say, "Well, who's this for? What's the company?" And we'd say, "Samuel L. Bronkwood's Productions," and 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 they'd say something like, "Oh, is he still making pictures? <laughs> you know, or or Samuel? Oh, of course, yeah. Samuel Bronkwood's. Well, great. <laughs> you know, it just sounded legitimate." Yeah. And and uh, um, and then in the trailer, was, we actually cast a guy as Samuel L. Bronkwood. Yeah, we just. Yeah, yeah, Samuel Bronco, it's Sid, uh, I can't remember, I Sid Kane. Sid Kane. I believe I remember yeah. that. That's the name of the actor. He's still but, alive. But He's 110 he? now. <laughs> I don't, but, yeah. I don't know. I, yeah. It's they didn't. So it just seems a shame that Leslie is gone and he's, and still, he's still alive. alive. Yes. You know, is there no God anyway? But, uh, <laughs> but, but sorry, but it's really cool. But, but uh, um, uh, no, it was that was that was funny. We had stationery yeah. and cards and everything, and it was you know it was, uh, um, uh, and it actually did. I mean, it was fun and and funny, but it actually did serve a purpose. Well, we're both working on a bunch of things, some comedies. Uh, we just, uh, I don't know if it's open here. Is Fair Game open here yet? Um, uh, is this, is uh, uh, Sean Penn and Naomi Watts. Oh, it's on its way, yeah. Oh, okay. That was, uh, my wife and I produced that. that the, the, the sort of Washington... Yes, uh, yeah, yes. politics. So we just finished yeah. that. And, um, you know, just, just uh, there's, I don't have anything, I don't think either of us have anything right now scheduled to, I have you know, a couple of scripts that, again, I'm looking for investors for. Mm -hmm. okay, well. So if anybody, you know, yeah. buying this DVD. You know. I've read them and they're hysterical and, and they're, they're, I just, they're guaranteed to make a fortune, so. Well, one is actually a, a PG comedy, a slapstick comedy for, that that families would would love to see so it's not you know the opposite of a kentucky fried movie yeah. r-rated thing it's a buddy comedy about you know it's a laurel and hardy combination who uh they they work as bus boys at the white house and they overhear spies uh talking about a, a plot to steal the secret plans to the the government's new invisible plane and so both these guys dream of being in the secret service so they uh you know they they gradually, it probably in the worst way, get, get it, actually get to be in the Secret Service. So, and the movie's called The Secret Secret Service. Well, the, it's going to be an ensemble comedy like most of the movies that, that we've done. Um, and and we'll just, we want to get a cast two unknowns. Yeah. And so, and we'll do a, we'll make it into a franchise, hopefully.